Hello Desert Bearhawk fans, we're back in the shop today. Um, it's been a rough week or so with allergies and being sick. Finally got starting to get on the front side of it. Um, but I'd have a couple brief periods throughout the day where I'd feel kind of okay. So I got out here and I got the um, clamps and clamp standoffs in position for the uh, supply tubes. And um, got those all through, cut the length, everything is riveted in place as you can see. And now the final step is to put the hole in the tank bay cover for the uh, sump. So this is how I did it in case, uh, in case you are wondering how I locate this hole. This is how I do it. Uh, not my idea. Guy by the name of John Schnapp up in Colorado, or he may be over in the Seattle area now. I've kind of lost contact with him, but that's how we located. Basically, we used the same idea to locate the filler neck in the top skin. But basically, what we do is we just uh, locate the hole like this. And um, <clears throat> on the top skin, when I put the, um, the hole in the skin, and when I use this... Um, this method, John provided me with a laser cut um, template, if you will, that the hole in the laser cut template was exactly the diameter of the filler neck. So I could just slip it on the filler neck. And then what I did is I, uh, in that template, I cut out some, some windows here, just cut out some rectangles so I could see through and then double-sided packing tape them so they were solid again. But then I could see through to like rivet holes. So I would line, color in some rivet holes all the way around, all the way down, and then put my tank in, put my skin, you know, or <clears throat> take my tank out, excuse me, put my skin back down, line up the rivet holes, and then I could um, mark the location for the filler neck. And it worked out, I mean, perfect. I, uh, I made the hole for the filler neck a uh, 64, 64th of an inch larger in radius so a 32 in total diameter larger than the filler neck and uh, man when it's on there it just fits in there perfect so this is the method we're going to use here I will uh, flip this up out of the way like so install my cover drop it back down and what I will do is I will actually um, mark these crosshairs here and then I'll just center punch on the on the X um, drill it out with a number 40 and then use my unit bit and just keep stepping it up until I get it to exactly the hole size I want for for the sump valve there and uh, we'll be done that'll be it I mean it's pretty straightforward stuff now I'll probably go oversize on it slightly too because each time you install the tank it's you don't get it in exactly the same position every time so I'm going to probably go slightly oversized to give it some room to kind of move around in there. And uh, that's how we're going to do it. So I'm going to go knock that out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to edit this video. So I'll put two, two videos together and make it one continuous. Um, so stand by and through the magic of editing, I hope, you'll have a continuous video going here. And we'll be right back with the, uh, the hole drilled or at least marked and um, starting to move forward. So we'll see how this goes. All right, see, see you back in a sec. Okay, just like that, we're back. Um, hopefully I've edited this out to make some sense, but you can see now, there she is, sumping the fuel before flight. It's gonna be a great day. So this wing, which is the right wing, is now done. Um, again, the fuel lines are plumbed in. You can see down here I've got electrical plumbed in for the magnetometer for the uh, G3X system along with the uh, black conduit that goes out to the wingtip lights. Um, everything is in place. All I need to do now is mount the wings and then I, like I said, I'll drill. I'll drill the flap lever once the wings are mounted and I kind of get the geometry figured out. But this one's done. 
this one's uh, going to be done here uh, very shortly. You can see inside I've got a template for one of the uh, lightning holes to open it up for the fuel tank. And then I've got my, my template that I used for this guy right here already made up. So, and I kind of figured out how all this was going to work. Piece of cake. So it's going to be very quickly I will have the other one done. And then these are going to get these uh, wing tip. These wings are going to get loaded up and sent to storage, I believe. I'm vacillating on whether or not I want to start on the wing tips or if I want to work on some other things. I'd like to get these out of here because they really consume up my my two car garage. But I might just what I might do is before I send them out, I might pull the templates off the wing tips, and then I can move these out of here and fabricate the wing tips here without these wings here. Um, it might require a few trips back and forth to storage, but at least the freedom of not having these wings in here will um, make it worth it. So that's where we are. Um, every day I realize the old saying that 90% done, 90% to go is just a reality when it comes to home building. And that's where we are with this. We got, a, you know, these wings are 90% done. You know, I still have to rig the cables inside for the ailerons. Um, still have to drill the flap push levers to the flap torque tube. Um, and all that can't be done until the uh, wings are mounted on the aircraft anyway. So at this point, they're as done as they're going to get. So there's your update. Um, I will... Shoot another brief update when I get the other tank done. If you have any questions on what I did, feel free to post them. I'll try to answer best I can. Um, one question that was asked real quick was about putting these holes in here. Um, drilling through the rib, or in this case, I just removed material, as you can see here. Uh, the question that was asked to me is, are, are you, aren't you weakening this rib? And I, you know, I can honestly say I'm not an engineer. I don't have a background in engineering, but I've built model airplanes for 40 years and I've been building on this one for six. And um, I gotta tell you, there's two 32 thousandths ribs laminated together here. So this is 64 thousandths thick right here. And I just don't feel that any of this is gonna compromise the strength of this rib at the root. Um, you know, I could be wrong, but uh, I think that trying to get, trying to get my lines to come out through a lightning hole by using, you know, a 90 and then another 90 and all these AN fittings, all you're doing is asking for things to fail, places to leak. That did, did make any sense to me to do that whatsoever. This seems to be the appropriate way to handle it. Um, I haven't consulted my, my build you know, the uh, Bearhawk build manual in quite some time. I'm kind of shooting off a of memory, but this makes the most sense. And that's the way I did it. So um, if it fails, I'll be the first to know. So with that, we are complete on the right wing as far as we can get less the wing tip, which we're gonna work on. Um, we're gonna work on that next. I'm already kind of learning to do pink foam. You can see there's some pink foam here. I've been working with cutting it and shaping it and trying to get an idea how it works. So uh, I think the wingtip's going to go really fast, super easy. I'm just going to, I'm going to cut it out of foam and shape it like a surfboard uh, guy shapes a surfboard and uh, make some paper templates so I can do the reverse on the other side and we should be golden. But uh, that's where we are. That's the update. Hopefully this video worked out for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them and I'll try to answer as best I can. So with that, see you in the shop next time.